Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to start creating a PrestaShop e-commerce web server. So first, let's remove our Joomla containers because we're not using them. So let's just try a Docker Compose down at the same level of your Docker Compose file. And remember that here you have all of your info. So no worries about this because all of your data is safe. Let's just go back and now let's try to go inside of the PrestaShop folder and here we have another Docker Compose file. So let's go ahead and explore this file in the Sublime text because it looks better. And cool. Here you see that we have the version 3 again. We have some services. We have one service which is DV and another which is PS. So you see that here we define all the things for MySQL and here we define all of the things for PrestaShop. So now let's just take a look at this. Container name, you see that it's optional. You can give it or you cannot give it, depends on you. For the DV service, we will be using the image of MySQL 5.7. We will be creating volumes again because it's super important to keep the track of the volumes in MySQL. So we are saving a local folder in the current directory called data and we are mapping this directory to our live MySQL. You know about this, the environment variable for MySQL, that root password, user, password, and database that will be created once the container is created. Here we are mapping the ports, this is optional as well, and here we are just including this container in a net called MyNet. And you see that we are creating this network here in this section, in the network section. So let's go to the PS service you know, this could be anything, the name doesn't matter. Here we're defining a name and again another volume. Well, if you don't know what PrestaShop is, let's go to Google and type Docker PrestaShop. It's basically an e-commerce solution. So let's go here, let's wait for this to refresh and it says PrestaShop offers are free, fully scalable and open source e-commerce solution. Okay, nice. So here, let's see if we have any information about volume. So let's just look for it. No. Let's see if RWW. No. Okay, here we see the Docker file. So we go to the Docker file and here you see that they are using multi-stage build as we spoke in previous lessons. And here they are just downloading some stuff in Tam Presto Shop. And then in this step, they just copy the thing that they downloaded. But basically this is the layer that will be the final image. And you see that it starts from a Apache. And again, what's the default folder for Apache? for www.html. That's why we are mapping our local folder to this folder inside of the container. So this is nice. Here we have a new thing which is depends on and this option allows you to set dependencies between containers. Well the dependency is not that strong but it basically allows you to set which container should start first. So here you say that this service depends on the DV service, which means that the DV service should be created first and second your PS container. Next, we're using the PrestaShop image to run this service. So let's go to Google and you see that this is the name of the image. So PrestaShop slash PrestaShop. Nice. We're also exposing the ports. Remember that exposing the ports in web servers is important because otherwise you won't be able to browse your site in your web browser. And here we are setting some environment variables again. How do we know them? Well, let's go here and let's read how this image works. And you see how to run this image. And here you have a lot of environment variables that you can use. You see that normally you have DV user, password, DV name, and DV host somewhere. So that's what we're going to use. We have the DV server. Remember that the DV server could use the name of the container or the name of the service. In this case, we're using the name of the service. Then we're using the DV user, which is PS, and this user was created by MySQL. Then we use the DB password and the DB name to point to this user and this password. 
remember that the value is ps and ps and this is good and finally we bind this container to the network mynet that we just created in order to establish communication between the two services using the names which is quite important so okay now that we know how this works let's go to our terminal let's modify the docker compose yaml file and let's add a new port. I will just add a different port, let's say 9090. And let's save this file. And remember, you should always type docker compose app d at the same level of your docker compose file unless you specify the path using dash f. So let's just do docker compose app. Again, I didn't have the image locally, so that's why docker compose is pulling the image for me. So let's wait for this to finish. And once the process finishes, I mean the download, you see that the containers are created. So if you type docker ps, you see your MySQL container and your PrestaShop container. Remember that this container is now exposed in the port 9090, but it's pointing to the port 80 in the container. So let's go to our web browser, let's go to our IP address, and let's look for the port 9090 and let's see what we have there and well we have a connection refuse let's type docker ps our containers are here so probably the mysql service is still starting so let's say docker compose logs dash f and here you see that it says internal error cannot create temporary directory and that's probably because i ran out of space and yes that's because i ran out of space so let me just fix this error I will pause the video and I will come back to you okay I just deleted some dangling volume some dangling images and some images as well because this machine is hosted in AWS and it's a super tiny machine so I only have a couple of gigs available as you can see here I only have eight so yes I just removed some stuff and now it's better so okay now let's just go ahead and do this I'm just going to remove the containers that were created and I will now create new ones. So I will say docker compose app dash d and now it shouldn't complain because uh, I already have free space. So let's wait for the containers to be created and now we can type docker compose logs dash f and that will follow the logs of the containers. And this seems good. You see that MySQL is ready. So let's go to our browser. Let's refresh and let's see if this is working now. And great, as we expected, this is working. So now let's click on next. We're just choosing the language. Now we just agree and we click on next. Here we see that we pass some checks. So let's just click on next. And here we need to provide some arguments again. So let's say test store first name, let's say Ricardo, let's say Gonzalez, let's say admin at admin.com, the password one, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Please make sure that you provide real information, right? I'm just testing, so that's why I'm just giving random values. You should give real information. So let's click on next once we finish and now we need to do the same thing for databases. So let's take a look at our file and remember that the name is DV and we are able to ping this database by using this name thanks to the networks because remember that this database is joined to this network and this is also joined to this network so that's why they are able to see each other. So we say that the server is DV the database name is ps, the login is ps, and the password is ps. So user ps and password ps. Great. So now we can test it and you see that your database is connected, which means that everything is going good so far. So now let's click on next. And okay, this is basically the final step. Now we just need to wait for this process to finish. So I will pause the video and I will come back once it has finished. And great, the installation just finished, as you can see here. And then it says for security purposes, you must delete the install folder. Okay. And well, that's just a matter of security. But now we can click on, we can just go to our home and you are going to see your store 
in here, running in Docker, which is a super cool thing. So you see how easy it is to create any service using Docker. So now we're going to go to our shell. We're going to hit Control C to kill this screen because these are the locks. And here I will just do a Docker Compose Down because remember that here we are saving all the MySQL data in the data folder and we are saving all the things from PrestaShop in the HTML folder. So here we have the two folders with the information about the services. So this is super nice. Now if we go to our web browser and then we try to refresh, you see that it's not working because the containers are dead. So we can just come here to docker compose app-d and what happens is that docker will map the proper volumes to the correct path for the service to come up as you left it. So if you come here and then you refresh, you see that you don't need to configure anything else because everything is saved securely on volumes. So this is cool. This is it for this video. I hope that you now know how to install a PrestaShop server using Docker. I'll see you in the next lesson.